We're still looking at assessment objective one, this um, informed personal creative responses using associated concepts and terminology and coherent, accurate written expression. So if you've been watching the series so far, we've really got to the point, I think, where we've learned a lot of literary terminology. Um, and we've had a little look at how you can use it in an analysis. But now we're going to move on to the three big areas of analysis, language, structure and form. And we're going to look today at form. Now, there are lots of ways of thinking about form, but one from the book that I think is a really good idea is if you imagine a building. So there are many types of buildings, for example, a hospital or a school or a fire station, and they're all built for a specific purpose and you know what they are without having to enter them. And likewise, the form of a text is the first thing we know without having to read it. And in the same way that you see immediately that a hospital is a hospital, you can pick up a poem and see that it's a poem. So form, therefore, is the way we classify writing, which, like a building, has a distinctive structure or framework. And the main literary forms are drama, essay, novel, novella, poetry, prose and short story. And we might split those into subforms as well. Um, but in terms of your A-level, you're going to be studying prose, drama and poetry. And in those topics we have, uh, in those uh, forms, there are lots of subforms. But you shouldn't kind of worry too much about whether something is a form or a subform. It's more important to identify a particular form and consider why the writer has selected it. And this is one of the big things about A-level. It's understanding a form and then looking at why it is used. So what I'm going to do is go through some of the main forms of poetry, prose and drama. And uh, as I said, all of this is in the e-book. You know, it would be too quick to write it all down. But these are the three um, genres, uh, sorry, forms. I'm using the wrong words now. These are the three forms that you will be studying for A-level English literature. So let's start off with prose. Now, prose is a piece of ordinary writing that consists of sentences and paragraphs. And, um, you know, it's the one that uh, we're probably most familiar with reading. Different um, examples of a prose form. We have autobiography, an account of a person's life that's written by the person themselves. So, for example, Alan Sugar's book. Um, you know, he writes about his own life. We then have biography, which is an account of someone's life written by another person. So um, we've got, for example, um, uh, Charles Dickens and uh, this biography by Claire Tomlin, which is, you know, not written by Charles Dickens, is written by Claire Tomlin. And biography is... Uh, or often you know, researched by somebody and then they interview lots of people who knew the person or look at lots of evidence and research and letters and journals and put together a kind of account of their life. A fable is a brief story with a moral, often including animals. And the, the Greek Aesop is still famous for his fables, which today you can pick up published as Aesop's Fables. An essay, you guys are familiar with those, a short piece of writing usually written at school or university about a particular subject. And then we've got fiction, which is creative writing. Um, and uh, World War Z or World War Z, as they say in America, is a, a really interesting example of that. Graphic fiction, which is where there's dialogue and artwork, for example, in comics. Uh, heroic prose. Legends and tales are examples of heroic prose, which are basically stories that are written down or recited, um, employing formulaic expressions found in the oral tradition from the times before writing, stories that are passed on verbally, for example, once upon a time. Uh, a good example of that, of course, is, well, not of course, but it's Gods and Fighting Men by Lady Gregory. Non-fiction, then, there are a, a different sort of Sub-genre, uh, sub forms of non-fiction. Um, it's a narrative prose based on facts and reality. So biographies, autobiographies, they come into it. Articles, essays, diaries, like the diary of Anne Frank. Uh, a novel is a long piece of creative writing that tells a story. 
um, about 50,000 words or more would, uh, you know, just make it a novel, uh, distinguish it from a novella. Um, and because of its length, then there's the scope for complex characterization, plots, subplots, that kind of thing. You'll be reading uh, a number of novels uh, for A-level English literature. A novella, like Of Mice and Men, is similar to a novel, but essentially shorter. It contains roughly 20,000 to 50,000 words. And because of its you know, length, its shorter length, it's less likely to have subplots and multiple uh, narrators. Uh, but description of character and setting are often more detailed than in a short story. Um, so it's the sort of the middle ground between the novel and the short story. And the short story, represented here by the picture of Claire Wigfall, who many of you will know from GCSE short stories. She wrote When the Wasps Drowned. Uh, a short story is a fictional prose narrative, shorter than a novella. And because it's so short, there are fewer main characters, might only be one, and the story will probably contain one major conflict, um, which we'll come to in, uh, in our section on structure. So those are the common forms of prose. And for the sake of your A-level, um, you will probably be reading novels. You might, um, you know, to read around the subject, read some uh, biographies and perhaps even autobiographies. Um, but those are the sort of main prose genres you're likely to explore. Drama then is a little bit more simple really. Drama is written to be perform performed on stage or on radio or TV and there are um, some examples of dramatic forms of five act play, uh, a play with five acts like uh, you know many of the Shakespeare plays, a musical, one of the most depressing things in the world, a play or a film with lots of singing and dancing where the songs are interspersed with the dialogue and everybody starts singing for what seems to be no apparent reason. Um, a one-act play is a very short play that just contains one act. An opera, a stage drama that is usually set to classical music with singers and instruments and the singing is usually continuous. A screenplay, similar to a play but contains additional instructions for producing a film such as camera positions and movements. A skit which is a short satirical or humorous comedy sketch or story and a three-act play which is funnily enough a play containing three acts. What are you likely to look at? Well I think everybody pretty much for their A-level is doing uh, Shakespeare so you'll be looking at five-act plays um, definitely but uh, you know other plays might be a uh, long one-act play uh, put a comment in the comment section, see if you can identify from the text you know you've got to study which of these forms they are. Poetry is probably the most complex and you will be looking at a lot of poetry and you will be looking at a range of poetic forms. So poetry expresses concentrated thoughts and ideas through a distinctive style and rhythm, uh, often contains rhyme and a lot of figurative language and imagery um, and there are to so many forms of poetry. So these are some of the main ones I think you're probably likely to look at. A ballad, that's just a poem that tells a story. Uh, historically, it was written to be sung, so it often has very short verses and a repeated refrain, which is um, you know like a chorus of a song. Uh, a popular Victorian example, The Lady of Shalott by Tennyson. A dramatic monologue is a poem where uh, there is a distinct persona, so the poet is not writing about their own experience, but they take on the character of somebody else, and t it's um, talking to a silent listener. And we read the poem, and we have to, or we, you know, find out things about the, the speaker in the poem through what they're saying. So, My Last Duchess by Robert Browning. There's a video on that on this channel. That's an example of a dramatic monologue because Robert Browning is not writing from his own perspective. He's writing from the perspective of the Duke of Ferreira. Uh, an elegy is a sad poem or song lamenting the death of somebody. Uh, an epic is a long, serious narrative poem about a significant event that uh, features a hero, for example, the Iliad or the Odyssey by Homer, not Homer Simpson. Uh, you probably won't look at them until you get to your degree, but you never know, you might have a look at them. 
Uh, what what do we get up to? Heroic poem is um, very much like the epic, but there's a mock heroic poetry in which the elevated language from epic poetry is used to describe everyday events or people to uh, satirise or mock, uh, for example, Alexander Pope's The Rape of the Lock. A haiku, you might remember having a go at writing haikus, uh, a Japanese poem with three unrhymed lines of five, seven and five syllables. An idyll, a short poem that describes a rural or pastoral scene. It has a mood of peacefulness and contentment and we can see the word idyllic links to it as well. Um, by the way, you know, all of these are written down in the ebook, so you might think I'm, you know, whizzing through them, but I uh, just want to get through them in half decent time. Uh, Lay is a lyrical narrative poem often sung by medieval minstrels, and common themes include adventure and romance. A limerick is a simple, light-hearted and humorous poem of five lines with an A-A-B-B-A -B -B -A rhyme scheme. And you might remember many limericks yourself. Here's one I've always liked. There once was a lady from Gloucester whose parents thought they had lost her. From the fridge came a sound and at last she was found, but the problem was how to defrost her. Uh, a lyric poem is an emotional poem expressing the thoughts and feelings of the poet. It does not tell a story. Uh, sonnets and odes are also lyric poems and obviously we have the word lyric now applying to words in a song we think of lyrics. A narrative poem is a poem that tells a story so epic poems, ballads, idylls and lays are all examples of those. An ode is a formal lyric poem praising a person, an animal, an object or an event. Pastoral, anyone know about pastoral? Where do we get the word pasta from? Shepherd. A poem about the simplicity and sweetness of rural life. Satire, you might remember from GCSE. Any writing that ridicules the vices, silliness and shortcomings of people, organisation, government or society. Jonathan Swift wrote a lot of um, satire, both in uh, essay and poem form. A sonnet you're bound to remember from GCSE, a love poem, uh, 14 lines, iambic pentameter. There is a difference between the Shakespearean sonnet and the Petrarchan sonnet, and sometimes poets choose to use either or of those, even if they're writing after Shakespeare, so look out for the difference between them. And a villanelle, a lyric poem of 19 lines with two rhymes and two repeating rhymes. The first and third lines alternate throughout the poem, which is structured in five tercets and a quatrain. More about that in a future video on structure. So that's some ideas about form. Now, it's not just about identifying the form, but looking at why it's important. So I really do recommend you pick up a copy of the ebook. It's all covered in there, but I hope you found this useful.